Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's the Oni with Thrifty Divas, and today we are here starting the Kitchen Chronicles. Part one, I don't know how many parts there will be. You're falling off the tripod. I was facing the other way, and then the sun through the roof was like, ooh, the Oni's filming. She grabbed a camera, let's get weird. And it was like glowing like something from outer space. So we had to move this way. Not my favorite, lighting's not that good. But I was like, we need to start this because it's getting closer and closer and it's going to be like time and I'm going to have not told you anything about what has been going on. So let's get started. Today, as I am sitting down to film this, it is November 29th, 2023. This journey that we are going on began back in late April. Okay. So I'm going to try to stay in chronological order. I'm going to do the best that I can so that I don't have to jump around too much, but I make no promises because I kind of stink at that. But all right. So my uncle had gotten his kitchen done late at the end of the prior year. And he said it was a regular customer at the restaurant that he works at. And, um, that he was really good he was happy with it his price was great and that actually currently a waitress at the restaurant was also getting like her kitchen or her bathroom done by him so and i said all right cool give me his number and i had actually asked him for his number for a very long time but my uncle kept like for forgetting to give it to me so i finally get his number yes i'm smoking i'm gonna keep smoking when i talk to my friends i like to smoke okay i'm gonna try not to do it in every video but again i make no promises so he finally gives me his number. I call him. I leave him a message. He calls me back. Everything started off lovely. He was like, oh, I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you. Mind you, I called him on the weekend and then he called me on Monday. So I thought nothing of it. I was like, oh, no problem. Now, if you are from Long Island like myself or are familiar with this part of New York, downstate New York at all, I live pretty far out east in Suffolk County, okay? And um, this guy actually lives in like Massapequa the the restaurant is in lindenhurst that my uncle works at so i was like wow okay cool and this guy came out here he looked at my kitchen i told him what i wanted everything seemed great he seemed very personable talked a little too much for my taste but everything seemed okay i was beginning to get excited okay i wanted my kitchen done from the moment i bought my house when I looked at my house, I said, kitchen's gonna be redone one day. It's gonna be perfection. I had to get up for a second. Um, that's a whole other story, craziness. If you hear that kind of metal going on in the background, I had to go check on something. Anyway, all right, where was I? Okay, so yeah, he came, I was super excited, you know, starting to get excited. And, uh, but my mama didn't raise no dummy. So I was like, let me call some. Oh, I had spoken to him kind of about like a ballpark on the price, right? So he called me like the next day, gave me a ballpark on the price and with everything that I wanted. And then um, I ended up, my mom had somebody do her like tile in her kitchen and her bathroom or something. So she gave me his number to call. So I called him. So from here on in, we're going to call him my uncle. We're going to say my uncle's guy and my mom's guy. Okay. Actually, what am I doing? I need to back it up to the previous year or so. I have a personal friend who basically became my personal contractor and my mother's personal contractor and did every single bit of work for me anywhere. He built my she bay shed. He, anything I wanted, he he did, okay? We worked very well together. We were actually talking about him doing an extension on my house. He was going to do the kitchen. Then he ended up moving to 
I don't even remember at this point. It was North Carolina he talked about, Las Vegas he talked about. I don't, it was a whole, I don't even know where he ended up. I think he moved twice. But I was like, you're going to leave me high and dry on my kitchen. Because <laughs> we had been talking about it forever. I did all the measurements for him and all that. We worked together. He always called me the project manager. Did all the measurements, knew what cabinets I needed. Or, like we had everything done. So he had promised me that he was actually going to take off work or whatever, come back to New York for a month, specifically just for my kitchen. And that was supposed to happen last February. And he told me how much he wanted just for him. And then all the parts and everything, you know, was, was on me. So, well, that turned out to be a lie. So he was not coming back. So that's how this whole debacle started okay because my contractor moved and lied to me so i needed to start from scratch okay now back to where we were so then i call my mom's guy to come take a look he's looking at everything so now technically he's like the third person to look at this right and He's looking, I told him everything I want. And then he said, do you mind if I look downstairs for a sec? I mean, I'm sorry. Do you mind if I look outside for a second? I said, no, of course not. So he goes and looks outside and then comes back to me and says, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there's no way your design is going to work. I said, what do you mean? He said, you have a chimney, a brick chimney, like a 30 foot or more brick chimney built halfway into your house. And it is right to the left of where your stove is right now. That's why they did your kitchen the way they did it right now. And you can't make a straight run the way you want it to extend all your countertops and cabinets. When I tell you, I locked myself outside pretty much. <laughs> I was smoking a cigarette and crying like a baby. I, I, I'll admit it. And looking on Zillow because I was like, if I can't do the kitchen, I'm buying a new house because that's how much I wanted the kitchen. It was in my plans from the moment I bought it, like I said. And the contractor like stayed in the house trying to talk to my husband, trying to come up with some other ideas with the space that we had. And I was like, no, no. I basically told my husband like, get rid of them nicely, but no, I'm not interested in spending a dime to redo this space and, and the same functionality that I have right now. So in here, I'm going to add all the footage and explain to you exactly what was going on of where he couldn't do it. Okay, so this is my stove and here is a wall directly to the left of my stove. Turns out there's a chimney halfway in through here. Let me take all this stuff off just to, to show you better. So I want this to go totally straight. I'll show you pictures in a second. So the chimney is halfway in this wall here. This monstrosity of a, of a bump out for the double oven is there. It's right here in the middle. Ignore the mess. And what I want is a smaller coat closet on the left and then counters running all the way across. Here's the outside. You could see an addition to my house doesn't even line up with the other one, which is gonna take a whole bunch of, of interior work to make that level without destroying my house. So we'll do it from the inside. And then here is the chimney, built in directly to the left of my stove. So I cannot go straight across because there's a big brick chimney in my kitchen. However, it was not lost on me that he was the third person to look at this project and the first one to find this major issue, okay? 
However, I'm weird with uh, loyalty or whatever. So I call back my uncle's guy, right? Because he was already here. He already spent time. He, I think he already came twice at this point because I'm stupid. I wasn't thinking about the obvious. I said, uh, we have a major wrench in the plans. Can you come look, see what can be done? Da, 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 da. He comes, looks, again, came all the way out here, okay? It's like over an hour. Came all the way out here, looked at everything, tells me, okay, um, we have to figure out how to do it. I have a boiler guy who's really, really good. And I'll send him over here to talk to you and blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, fine. <coughs> when I tell you this 20-year-old uh, kid came who, was, who, who told my husband and myself he was up all night, hadn't slept, and then had to drive to a job two and a half hours away and da 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 like the kid was a mess tells me he's an apprentice the red flags are flying and i'm just lottie dying all over the place right the kid bless his heart was not that bright um he's looking at everything and then he's like I think the easiest way to do it would be a brand new boiler and move it somewhere else. I said, sir, I just spent $10,000 about a year ago on a brand new boiler and hot water heater. I'm not touching this. Oh, it was because something where like they have ones now where you don't need a pipe. That's what he was talking about. I said, no. So... And then he was going to move it anyway. So, no. Anyway, he was coming up with all these crazy ideas. And, oh, we just have to figure out how to. And I said, can't you just extend it where it is outside? I just need to push it two feet back or two feet to the left or anything like out. Oh, yeah, we could do that, he said. Anyway. So, I talked to my uncle's guy again. Told him. And then he says, well... I don't have any chimney guys, so you have to find, like, your own chimney guy. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Red flags are flying. I end up going to Greece. We're all, we're all the way in July now. End of June. End of June. And uh, he texts me while I'm in Greece asking me if there's any update on the chimney stuff, I said no, but I did um, do a Google search before I left and there's plenty of uh, chimney companies, it looks like, so I can definitely find somebody, see what happens. I said, I'm out of the country, I'll be back. He said, okay. I come back, I call two chimney people, the first guy comes. He didn't really like the job, he thought it was too, he, he kept saying, it's interesting, it sure is interesting. Spent an hour here, by the way, measuring everything, taking pictures, looking at this. Tells me he's going to get back to me with a price. Never does. Okay, so that tells me you don't want the job. So then the other guy who came, I, I, I vibed with him a lot. He seemed very professional, knew what he was talking about. Went downstairs, looked at all the piping. Turned out to be the same type of t type and size of piping that he uses. He told me the options. I told him what I liked. He was cool with it. Um... Not so much like the other guy that never gave me a price. Then he says, I want to talk with your contractor because there's a whole bunch of other stuff involved in there. They put an extension on my house, apparently, and they don't even line up. And there was a gap and a whole bunch of stuff. And then now there's going to be a hole in the roof because they're tearing down this huge chimney. A whole bunch of stuff. So he says, I want to talk to your contractor or whatever. So I give my contractor, well... My uncle's guy, right? I give my uncle's guy his number, the, the chimney guy's number. I said, hey, if you could talk to him, you know. So they were talking and then they set up a time where they could both meet up here. So they both meet up here. We spent like another hour or so. Luckily, 
luckily it was another red flag, but I didn't even realize it turned out to be a good green flag. We agreed that the chimney guy would do the construction work on the outside. The roof, closing up the house, doing the residing, doing all this stuff. The chimney guy ended up doing it, which my uncle's guy was like, oh, well, if he's already going to be here, you might as well. And da, da, da. Thank goodness for that, for small miracles. That upped the price even more. When I tell you guys, are you ready? Are you ready? Part of the reason also I think why it was so expensive is because I did choose the least invasive option on the outside of the house, which ended up, I think, being the most expensive option. But we have a 32-foot double wall stainless steel class A pipe that does not need to be covered. Huge job. They did the roof, they closed up the house, they did all this stuff. We had a masonry dumpster, masonry dumpster in my yard for a week. Um, it was it was a big, they, huge scaffolding. I'll include it all here. This job ended up costing me, ready? $20,000. I don't wanna be dramatic. It was like 198 and change, okay? A week long job. $20,000 in, and this is just to make my kitchen plans feasible. Serious business here. Let me show you everything that happened with that project, a week of our lives here. So here is the masonry dumpster that will be here for several days. We have the scaffolding set up for the destruction of the existing brick chimney. So they have to break down the edges of the roof too. They've left for the day. We're on day two now, I believe. And it's still going. Big, big job. Here we are on day four. Five, um, the chimney's totally gone, and they did the actual piping and duct work from the existing boiler pipes. You can see at the base there, if you see that silver part jutting out, that's the new pipe. Ramp got broken, a big old mess going on, and thankfully, Brett found a pack of our roof shingles for them. And the pipe finally got delivered on day five. So they are installing the pipe as well as reframing the house and the roof and everything that has to do with that stuff. They left for lunch. They're gonna be back in just a little bit, but everything's getting super messy. They came and took the dumpster away, and even though they put it on pieces of wood, it left a big, dark gash scuff in the driveway, which kind of stinks. But oh well, that's where it was. The scaffolding is being broken down because the job is coming to an end. They are finishing up all the details and the shingles and the roof trim, but the pipe is in. And here is a look at the completed job. So that brick chimney was halfway in that disconnected gap in the house and they built it out and put the siding on you can see under here the old like hole from where the chimney came up. We'll fill that in eventually. But here is that pipe. That pipe alone was $9,000 of the job, but they, they did a great job. And luckily we found some extra bits you can see they finished the roof here. There was literally nothing in that area. 
so they put like the flashing and the trim and all the stuff that they had to do because there was nothing there because of the chimney. We found these scraps of shingles of siding, I mean, in the garage because this is a custom order siding that is discontinued. We bought the house with it. I would have never picked like a custom, weird, hard to get siding because I have fears of stuff like this but luckily we were able to find just enough scraps in the garage for them to cl complete that space behind the pipe because they were going to put a color called almond which would have been okay but luckily we did not have to we found enough to patch that up and now we're totally out <laughs> okay so there was that told my uncle's guy all right it's all done we're all good it's all closed up we're ready to go we so, and he told me he has his own cabinet maker that makes it right there. They also have the countertops that I want. So we'll order them all together. Um, it's placed in Queens in Flushing, if you're local. He never told me how long. He never told me anything. What he did tell me was uh, I was having little man's birthday party here, second week in October. I didn't know if I'd be able to or not. So we were talking about that. He checked his books. His availability was going to be right after little man's birthday party. We were going to start a five, four to five week job to do it. Cool. That was October, right? It was like October 16th to 17th. This project was supposed to finally get started. My uncle's guy ended up coming back multiple times. Um, in between all that to kind of look at things and whatever. And we had several discussions. Here's where the red flags became a ticker tape parade. He started giving me a really hard time and it kept getting worse because I noticed it in the beginning, but again, I let it slide. I think I was just too excited about the, the prospect of getting the kitchen redone. So, Things like, I wish Brett was here to jump in on this. That would make it such a better better vlog, but he's not very personable, believe it or not. Um, I told him what I wanted I took from the first day he got here. And I thought nothing of it because, you know, I was like, oh, it's just conversation. Oh, no. From the first day he got here, I told him what I tell everybody. I'm a big fan of drawers. I like a good drawer. So he says, this is the part I thought was just conversation. He says, I like a good mix. Instead of it being like all drawers, it's a better look. You know, it looks better. I like that. So I'm thinking he's just telling me what he likes, right? Isn't that what you would think? Well, as time went on, I told him that I most definitely want a spice drawer. I even sent him a picture of a spice drawer like this. And I said, I already bought the insert. I want my spice drawer. He texts me back. I usually go with something like this. <clears throat> I look at my husband. I said, first of all, what is this guy's problem? Second of all, I'm five foot 10 with a spine injury. I am not getting down on my knees to get the oregano, okay? No. So my husband was like, what is this guy's problem? It's not his kitchen. I'm glad he likes this stuff, but what, what is this guy's problem? So so my husband and I had many, many talks. And my, my husband was like, there has to be a reason. There has to be a financial reason or less work for him or something. Like there has to be some motivation as to why he's doing this. I said, no, I really think he just has major control issues and he's kind of an a-hole think he's he's a control freak my husband's like that is so weird I said yeah it is so now mind you 
This is to the point where he's actually uh, sketching the kitchen for me and giving me like the actual real cost after all of our discussions. This man gives me his sketch. To add insult to injury, it has a six inch spice pull out thing. He showed me like a, at least a 12 in his picture. No, this was a six inch pull out. I said, this man has lost his mind. What is his damn problem? Why won't he give me a damn drawer? When you select a base cabinet, it has cabinet or a base drawer unit. What is the problem? Okay. So I'm getting super frustrated now. I'm like, this man just won't listen to me. I don't understand. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So... I ended up calling my uncle and I said, hey, when you were working with what's his face, did he like give you a hard time, like not give you what you want? Was he like pushing his kitchen on you? So my uncle said, no, he definitely shared his ideas a lot, but you know, I just told him what I wanted and then that's what he ended up doing. I said, interesting. He said, why, what's going on? And I told him. He said, well, then get rid of him. I was kind of shocked my uncle was so quick to say get rid of him, but he didn't care. I said, I don't know, man. He's been here like freaking 10 times, it feels like. And we've come so far. I've been doing this for months now. Okay? It is now October. Or the end of September. So what was April, May, June, July, August, September? Five months! With all the insanity in between. And and talked to the chimney guy and came out here to meet with the chimney guy. And you know, I felt I was like, I'm not a jerk. I didn't want to kick him to the to the curb that quickly. And not only that, to be totally honest, I was like, I don't know what happens if I can't find somebody like at that price, too. Like, you know, I don't know. When he did his little sketches and we discussed everything, and he sent them to me, he told me on the phone that well, I'm sorry, he told me on the phone that he was sending them. And we discussed the price again. And he said it was exactly what we said. And that's, that's what, and I said, okay, awesome. Who was scared? He's like, no, no, we're all good. Everything we discussed. Okay. Along with his sketch was the quote or whatever. And to be totally honest with you, the first time, the first night when he sent it, he sent it at like eight o'clock at night. I looked at the sketch. I saw the six inch spice drawer. I was kind of taken aback. And, but I didn't look at the, the estimate because I'm like, we already discussed it multiple times and he just confirmed it to me on the phone, you know? But the next day I was driving in the car with my mom. I can't remember where we were going, but it was on my phone and I, and I opened the attachment while I was in the passenger seat. And I see that the estimate for for labor and materials and everything was like 200 and something dollars less than what he said. So I said, oh, guy, okay. he's trying to make sure it's there, right? But then I see New York State sales tax for several thousand dollars, bringing my total for several thousand dollars over what he said. And I'm like, this guy's a jerk. Not cool, not cool, not cool. Hey guys, editing Theoni jumping in here. There's a very important part of the story I forgot to mention right here. In addition to his total for the job before he lists the New York State sales tax, next to the total, the subtotal for the job for work and um, parts and literally everything, he wrote 
in parentheses, right next to that price, cash price. Okay? Huge part I left out here. We all know there's only one reason why anybody says cash price. And then on top of that, he charged sales tax or was attempting to charge sales tax that you are not allowed to charge. So that was a double whammy, double dipping, double grimy. So yeah, that was on the bill. I had to jump in and tell you here because I can't believe I forgot to mention it. It's so important. But all right, here we go. Back to the video. Something rubbed me the wrong way about it instinctually, and I didn't know what it was. But the first thing I did was call more kitchen companies. First kitchen company I call, and then we're going to end part one. First kitchen company I call says, where are you located? I told him. He said, oh, I'm all the way out in uh, Bethpage. You're too far from me. <laughs> if you're from Long Island, you know why this is funny. Because the other guy was from freaking Massapequa or Lindenhurst. I said, oh. Okay, sorry. And the light's getting weird again. It moved on me again. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Then this uh, other company called me back. I said, hi, can you come do a quote? So he came, gave me a quote. It was twice the price of the one that I had just gotten from my uncle's guy. He said, I guess he saw my face. And then he goes, well, was there a number you were thinking? So I told him, and I told him the price, basically, you know, that I had agreed upon with my uncle's guy. And he said, this is a huge kitchen. He said, your cabinets are that much, just the cabinets. I said, well, damn. But we talked for a while. And then he's like, you know, we have financing, we have this, we have that. You could even put down that half that you were planning on paying and then finance the rest and all. And I'm like, okay. First of all, I'm already 20 grand in for the chimney, right? To make this project possible. So then we just start chatting and I told him everything. I said, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I was working with this guy for damn near five months. This, that, and the third, X, Y, and Z, da, 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 da sends me his estimate everything's good until new york state sales tax and da, 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 and brought it over and the guy looks at me and he goes it's a capital improvement not allowed to charge sales tax i said oh well is that why it rubbed me the wrong way there was something inherently in me that knew it was wrong but i couldn't place it at the time i said interesting okay so the guy leaves. I'm like, thank you so much for coming out. And then I call my CPA right away. And it was like 8.30 or something at night, but he, he, he picked up the phone, which was awesome. Well, actually I texted him, he called me back. Uh, and I was like, thank you so much. He's like, no problem, I was here anyway. Tell him the whole thing. He's like, no, no explains everything to me explains nope that is a total capital improvement it's considered part of the project because you know if it was like just floor or carpet you know explain everything to me my cpa is a beast i love him um and i said you know i'm trying to think of like things that the contract is going to try to come up with so i want to like arm myself fully before I even discuss anything with him. And then I said, and one of the things I was thinking of is he's going to be like, oh, the cabinet place charges me the tax for purchasing the cabinet. So da da da. But then I said, but as I was telling my CPA, I'm like, but no, that's not it. Because the, the New York state sales tax he put on there was for the entire project. So he can't even try that. Can't even try that. It wasn't for the, the, the cabinet materials. So I'm like, all right, thank you so much. And then my CPA even told me the forms. He's like, it's a it's an ST224 or whatever he told me, ST124. I can't remember. I knew at the time and I could Google it quickly. But it is a 
um, capital improvement tax exempt form where you both the the customer and the contractor fill out the form together they both sign it and that is for the contractor's benefit so that when new york state is like why didn't you charge sales tax you have the form and you say because it's a capital improvement here you go it's it's exempt that's why it's for for their their protection so i was talking to my husband and i said listen i'm pissed off Okay, my husband was super pissed off too. But I said, and maybe it's a freaking boy thing. Maybe he thinks I'm stupid because I'm a woman. Mind you, he knew what I did for a living, which makes him the stupid one, doesn't it? Anyway, so I said, can, I told my husband, I said, can you please call him? Try to have a discussion with him and said, he goes, yeah, no problem. So he calls him and my husband is like the chillest person on the planet for the most part, unless it has to deal with our son, then it's a different story. Then you don't want him calling anybody because he's too heated and makes no sense. But that's neither here nor there. He has a very calm conversation with him saying, listen, you know, we've been doing this for months. We, we agreed on the price and essentially we're not happy with the way that we arrived over what we discussed, okay? We're also not happy with the way that you're designing your kitchen and not Theoni's. Theoni knows what she wants more than anything in the world. She knows what she wants. And you just need to give it to her. So he even explained to him the capital improvement thing. He told him the name of the form. He told him, you know, that we spoke to our CPA. He reminded him, my wife is an attorney. Stupid, but no, <laughs> he left out that part. He was thinking it though. Oh, by the way, backtracking, my CPA also said, you can report him right now to the Department of Taxation and Finance with the estimate you have. The estimate alone is a reportable offense. I said, good to know for my arsenal, thank you. So, the guy, my uncle's guy, tells my husband, why don't we talk again tomorrow, you know, when we're both calm, or something. He's like, let's calm, you know, calm, calm down a bit. Think about it. We'll talk again tomorrow. My husband's like, okay, no problem. That was that. And I'm like, calm down. My husband sounds half asleep when he talks to anybody. And so does this guy. This guy sounds fully asleep. When you see, he like whispers. He's one of those. So we didn't hear anything the next day. No surprise. And then the following day... I pray to God I have the screenshot because if I do, I'm putting it here. The following day, he texts my husband, not me, that he has decided, unfortunately, he cannot help us with our project. It's too stressful already and we haven't even began. And he wishes us luck. earmuffs what a scumbag he did that because he knew he was already caught doing something illegal before he even started and that's where his stress came in it's my theory think what you will and he bragged and bragged and bragged that he's been in this business for 40 years dude you, you've been doing that for 40 years you've never been called out on your shit before in 40 years you're either real lucky or real slimy. One or the other, because there ain't ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Ain't no way. Okay, so now I'm left high and dry. Now I'm stressed out because I'm like, I one person wouldn't come at all. The other person quoted me double the price. So I'm like, what if I can never find anybody now? Now I don't even have another option to go with this jackass. I was like, what a 
dick. <laughs> it's the only word I could think of. I was so pissed off. And did it through text, too. What a weasel. Weasel. Perfect word. So, that's where I'm going to leave off part one. Because then we're going to move on to part two. Almost immediately. But make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like. Leave a comment down below, even if it's an emoji. It really, really, really helps YouTube show the channel to other people and help us grow. And make sure when you subscribe, you hit that notification bell when it pops up so that you don't miss any time I post a new video, including all the other parts to Kitchen Chronicles. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this was enjoyable to you and at least the slightest. And um, until the next one, guys, stay blessed, my friends. I love each and every one of you.